We've got a bunch of Cinco Frame Pro 701 XPs here. Customer brought them in, uh, said one was just for parts, but wanted us to go through the rest of them. I'm going to show you how to diagnose these and uh, subsequently how to repair them, uh, uh, depending on what's going on. So, first thing I like to do is I like to make sure the slides work well. So this should slide forward and back nice and easy. If it doesn't, all the way up and down, then you're having an issue. So if your slide's not working, you're not going to feed properly. Uh, I also like to make sure that these aren't seized. This one here is actually seized up. You can see it's kind of rusted on. That's your depth adjustment. So you're going to want that to work too. I'm going to spray this down just with the lube and let it soak for a while. That should take care of that. It looks like they're going as deep as they can with all these maybe. Maybe they don't want the, uh, the adjustments on them. But... Anyway, we're gonna still free them up just in case they wanna use those. Uh, this one's obviously missing the trigger piece. Slide the hood on it. Good on this one. So before you uh, do any testing on these, uh, I would plug them in without the nails. Um, then go ahead and add the nails once you know that they don't, don't shoot uh, when you plug them in. Uh, a lot of the older models will actually shoot uh, without any warning when you first plug them in. Uh, very common. So be safe with these. Uh, don't point them towards anybody, obviously, as with any nail gun or gun or anything uh, um, like that. So we're going to get these uh, tested out here. I'm going to go ahead and test fire them, and then uh, we'll get them fixed. So I went ahead and switched out the trigger off of one of the ones that was the parts guns. Um, in order to do that, the easiest way is just to use a piece of a screwdriver or anything with uh, um, any kind of end on it, push straight down through, and you'll notice a little washer here fell off. So that's a real tiny thing, you don't want to lose it, but then the pin just comes out. It's a pin that goes all the way through here, and your trigger comes out. So it just goes straight in like that. There's not really a, um, a wrong way that you can install it once it goes up in here, like such. then you insert the pin. It doesn't really matter which way it goes as long as it goes in there. You'll test it afterwards. But we're gonna go ahead and test fire all these real quick, uh, figure out what they're doing. Uh, most of it I believe we should have parts for. We usually stock the parts for them, but if we don't, we'll get some stuff ordered. This one, as soon as you plug it in, leaking out the back. That's gonna be something to do with the head valve issue. Not doing anything at all as far as trigger action on it, so that one we're going to open up here. Looks like it's an H5. Take the four bolts out of the back here. Uh, normally if it's leaking out the back, it's a head valve issue. Um, could also be something to do with the trigger mechanism, but almost always it's a head valve issue. So here we've got, as soon as we open it up, and you see the top ring here, that is in pieces. So that's probably the majority of our issue here. Down in here, you want to make sure this has good action to it, which it does. Very important part there, if that uh, sticks or anything like that, it's not going to shoot right. Doesn't look horribly dirty on the inside here. Um, if they are real bad, you will definitely want to replace, the, uh, replace all the seals in the gun too. This one here, he told us to go ahead and rebuild them if they needed them. I'm not sure. I'm not sure here if this one's going to or not, but um, he's a pretty, pretty good customer. And he normally likes his stuff to last for a long time once we bring it back, so it's actually looking pretty good. Um, I'm not really seeing anything um, too bad going on with this thing at all. I mean, the piston was still staying um, sealed good into the cylinder. I guess it is kind of loose in there, but uh, you should get a little bit of drag along it. You shouldn't really see any major scratches or anything down in there. It should be pretty well honed. 
Um, if it's not, then you've got other issues. But on this one, I think we're just going to go with the uh, um, the head seal here. Uh, I think it's called a check valve seal or something to that effect. It just seals the top of the uh, of the cylinder off against the top of the head here. So uh, we'll get one of those ordered to get it uh, fixed up. We'll go on to the next. So that part number is a BF0212 uh, for the seal that was broken here in the last one. So we'll get some of those on order. Normally we have them. I'm not sure why we don't, but this one will get tested out here. Next in our bunch. Sounds pretty good. I don't hear any leaks other than from my outlet here at the bottom. Go ahead and throw some nails in it. These are kind of you know, all falling apart there. Yeah, so it looks like the back plastic piece here is broken on this. I don't really worry about it too much most of the time. Um, some guys want it fixed, but uh, it's riveted on there, so it's a pain. Yeah, so I'm supposed to shoot seven times and only shot five out of those. Yeah, so out of those three, it only shot two also. So it's skipping. Um, it's most likely O-rings, I had to guess. But we'll open it up here real quick and figure out exactly what's going on. If you notice, when I pulled the other one up, the trigger came all the way with it. This is a trigger assembly. It does come apart into pieces. Um, you just pull it apart. But if you look at the O-rings in there, that'll show you if they're bad or not. Um, a lot of times they'll get, you know, completely crusty or, you know, to where they're completely falling off also. But these look just worn out. Um, they're not horrible in the top there. Our BFO 20 or 212 here. It's in good shape on this one. Looks like it hasn't been long since it's been replaced or it's a newer model. That seems pretty good also. But the only reason for these things to skip whatsoever is bad O-rings in an instance like this. Um, either the gun's not returning fully um, or the O-rings aren't working properly. So there's no leaking coming from it. Uh, if there was leaking coming from the back or anything like that, I would tell you it could possibly be there's supposed to be a notch out of the side here on this, so don't don't uh, worry about that. But the uh, the plastic piece here, a lot of times around the inside, will get a crack in it, or around here somewhere, it'll just have a small hairline crack, and that'll cause it to skip. But you won't notice any leaking, also. So you want to pay real close attention to that. This can be replaced as a whole or in different sections. You can replace the check valve seal here and then the different O-rings. So what we're gonna do here, um, these feel just kinda tacky. Um, so that's what's going on is the O-rings aren't sealing like they used to. Um, pretty much the issue almost every time a gun comes in, you know, the O-rings are just kinda dried up or, you know, it hasn't been used a whole lot or something like that. But So we're gonna get an O-ring kit for this one and go ahead and fully rebuild it. Um, it depends on, uh, which route he wants to go, we may go ahead and get the, the seals and everything else also. I'll call him with an estimate on it, but we'll check this next one out here. See what's going on with it. And I'm just throwing all this stuff kind of in a pile. Um, I know where it all goes. If you don't know where it all goes, obviously I'd keep it separated out into different different areas. So that, as soon as I plug it in, again, it's just leaking right out the front. So it's not doing anything even when you try to fire. I didn't put any nails or anything in it, but as long as you pull the slide back, you can't dry fire it. Uh, it is not good on them. You don't want to continuously do it. Oh yeah, see that top bumper there is exploded? Yep, 
completely obliterated. Uh, this gasket, or the, uh, oh yeah, okay, it is busted on the back side too. So it's busted there, it's gonna need replaced. At this point, when they're this bad, you can see up here the top one's cracked also. So it's gonna come right off, the piece we were just looking at on the other one. But when it goes to something this bad, you're gonna wanna rebuild everything. So everything in here you're gonna wanna replace. And I'm gonna say even the even the, the black piece here, I'm gonna get this whole assembly. Um, because otherwise, uh, this could have a hairline crack that we don't see. Um, could be worn down so much. I mean, it, they're all up in there. The O-rings are just missing in spots too. And there's spots where it's completely missing. I mean, this one's in bad shape. It's been ran for a long time, you know, without really being lubed or taken care of. So uh, we'll get a rebuild kit, full one for this, uh, at least the O-rings for the other one, and then the top seal for the other and get these put back together. So we've got everything in here to get these fixed up. When we're putting this back together, you want to use either a high temperature silicone grease. We use a Kimplex 710. You can use a thicker oil like a pass load cordless oil. You just want something real thick in there when doing this because this is what's going to lubricate the, these O-rings for the remainder of their life. So even if, even if you're using tool oil afterwards, if you don't have a good lubricant in there to begin with, it's not going to really stick. You know, the, the tool oil goes really well with the high temperature silicone grease. It's a nice thick grease. It is very expensive. Um, reliability proven also makes one. It's a little bit cheaper. And I think they make two weights in it. A medium weight and a heavy weight. But anyway, we're going to start here with the first one. This is the one that had the uh, top check valve seal that was bad. So we're not gonna really mess with any of the O-rings on this to start off with, just because everything seemed good. You know, every, the action here is all good. Everything's returning. We will go ahead and lube it up. And you can just lube right along the outside here all the way around. And right around the inside here. So there's two O-rings on the outside and two on the inside that seal here for your check valve. But you just want to all the way around here and all the way around here. So it's not going to hurt it if you use too much. It's just going to come out the exhaust. Same thing down here with the trigger. You can pull the whole trigger assembly straight up and out. Just drop or two on each O-ring. You can spin it as you're applying. That way it gets lubed on there. This is just to make sure everything operates good after we send it back. I don't know what kind of shape these O-rings are in. They look pretty good though. You know, we inspected them. So we're going to go ahead and take the stance currently that these O-rings are going to be in good shape. So lube them up. We are going to go ahead and take the piston and cylinder assembly out. We're just going to wipe all this up real quick. Just wipe everything off the outside here since we're not replacing the O-rings. It's a mess, but it usually isn't too hard to come off. So you might need a few extra towels to do this, but sometimes it gets pretty bad. You can take the piston straight out. Clean up the inside also. And then we're gonna go ahead and replace the piston ring here also. If you look at it from a side view, you can see that there's no ridges left. So, right here on the side you should see some ridges if those ridges are gone that's reached the end of its life so this is a new one this is an LB0901 but on the corner you can see there's a ridge here so that's kind of showing you how much it's worn over time there but we're gonna put this new one on and and all we're gonna do is take the other one off clean up around in here Again, just as best you can real quick. We're not, you know, doing a full rebuild or anything on this. Throw a spot of lube down in there. This is technically an oil-free area in the middle, but I don't believe that at all. The oil always helps. So we've got that in there. We're going to go ahead and put it back down through. I like to lube first. Go ahead and put it in. And then lube after also. So all the way around the outside here. You can throw a little lube here if you want. It does make it easier to put down in there sometimes. 
it is not necessary. So you'll line up. You can see here there's kind of a bit there. And if you look down through, you can see that it lines up there. So to the front of the gun or to my left is where the tip of this, the top tip needs to go here. So we're gonna put it straight down in like that, all at one time. Usually you can line it up all at once. If you don't, you can pick it up and line it up. It'll go straight down in there though. Should fall to about that point. Again, there's still my oil that I've oiled is all around this edge, so that's fine. Let's clean up the top metal piece here and throw it back on there. We're also gonna throw, I believe, oh, this one had one on there. I see it still has a good one on the top here for the bumper slash retainer. I call it the top bumper, they call it the retainer. But that, if, if needed, it's a BF0204. So now we got this all lubed up. I always like to double check, just depress it again, make sure everything's just real nice and smooth. If it's not, you're just gonna wanna rebuild it. But this, basically what this top bumper retainer does is when the piston comes back up, it grabs a hold of the top of the piston and actually holds the piston up until it finds. So the top sleeve seal here, that's the BF0212. That's the one that was broken around here. So that seals from the cylinder here up to the top of the unit. So that seals from there up around to here to this check valve seal here around. And that's a BF0203, I believe, if it's broken. We normally just get the whole top assembly if that's broken. You can put this back together here, just get your screws I did want to point out with this top bumper here that if it is cracked or anything like that it will not properly hold that piston when it comes back up so it's supposed to hold on to that piston but if you've got a crack or anything down the side of it you know this one's getting a little bit worn but it's not too bad those will not work properly if it doesn't hold it then it's gonna come back down and you're not gonna get the firing that you should. You're not going to get the power out of it that you should. Go ahead and grab your H5 and go ahead and get the top back on here. You always want to start all of them before you tighten any of them down. Just to make sure everything goes on evenly. As you got them all started, work your way across and around. Now we'll go ahead. You always want to make sure that you're pointing it away from somebody when you plug it in or that there's no nails in it. So right now with that piston being down, it is down against the top of one of these nails right here. If there's no nails in it, that piston can drop all the way down when you push it in or however you want to do it. But anytime you've had a nail gun open, always make sure that it's pointing away from someone where it cannot ricochet or it cannot shoot somebody yourself or, or somebody else. Nail guns are dangerous. Accidents can happen. So fire this thing up real quick. Fired everyone, no problem there. That gun's all good to go. I hear no leaking from the unit at all. We're gonna call that one a success.
So the next one was the one that just needed the rebuild kit put in it. This is the one that was firing, but it was skipping. I'm not gonna show you the rebuild on that one. I'm just gonna show you the full rebuild one here. This is the one that had everything all busted apart on it. That essentially needs everything in the unit that can be replaced. So this one's gonna take a whole firing system kit. That's the YK0243. It's also gonna take The firing valve assembly so that's that uh, piece in the top the piece up here in the top that's broken on this one that's this piece here so we're just going to replace it we've got the lb0901 like we did on the last one and then also another one of the bf0212s as on the last one and then this one's gonna take the BF0204, which is the top retainer. Retainer. So, kind of the same thing as we just did on the other one. Go ahead and clean everything up though. You can use, on something like this, you can use like a QD electronic cleaner if you want. You can also use a, like a pass load cordless tool cleaner. Those cleaners don't ruin the O-rings, don't leave like a residue of any sort, but you want this to be nice and clean in here before you put anything back together. So you want all this wiped out real well. Do the best job you can. Cinco used to sell a tool cleaner that did pretty well. I don't believe they even still make this anymore though. We've got new old stock of it around here, but I'm not sure they even make it anymore. All right, so. Clean that up real well, make sure it's all nice and clean. We're gonna go ahead and open our firing valve assembly here. It comes with the BF0203 already installed on it here. I believe that's the part number anyway. But the O-rings are not here. So if you've got one of the ones that you're not gonna replace this firing valve assembly on, you're going to have to take these O-rings both off the outside and off the inside to replace those. If you do that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure also you clean this up, both just everywhere here. I mean, spray it off, get everything off of this, use whatever means necessary. Carburetor cleaner is a little bit harsh for some plastic like this, but anything short of that, you know, a nice cleaner that doesn't leave a residue, otherwise something that rinses off afterwards with water and dries. So you want this to be extremely clean though. This is where all your firing power comes from on this thing. So. If that's not clean, your, your gun's not gonna work well. We're gonna go ahead and open the firing system kit here. So, get the old parts out of the way here. And this does not come with the, with the LB0901, which to me is kind of silly. I think it should. It's a firing system kit. You would think that that would uh, be a part of the firing system. It does come with the ring here that is part of the BF0203 though, in case this is bad. So if, you, if you're needing to replace that, basically what happens here, I'll show you on the, well, this one's kind of difficult or easy because it's broken, but basically what you do is you pry upwards a screwdriver that's a good, good screwdriver make sure you're not going to break anything but it helps if you you can heat it up and put it in boiling water first drop it in there for about 30 to 45 seconds bring it out and then try this obviously don't burn yourself but it does help a lot but up and over and this unit will come off and then you stretch the new one on you have to go from the side and over to get it on it's kind of difficult to get on but it will go on there so it's about there now you just continue to push and it'll go up on there, but I'm not gonna do that since this is a new new seal. So just showing you how to do it if you're not replacing the firing valve, but we are. So we don't have to clean any of the rest of that top stuff. We've already got it all cleaned up since we're replacing it, but we do have to, just like in the other one, take the cylinder and the piston and everything out. This one came with the bumper out. Sometimes a bumper will come with it. The skinny part goes down towards the bottom and the other part fits up inside the cylinder. You can put it all back together as one or you can throw it in there 
and then put the piston and cylinder back on top of it when we're putting it together. Again, we're just gonna clean these up. Oh, there goes all my, goes all the rest of that top bumper there falling apart on me. All right, so clean that all there up. This one's not as bad as the other, which is kind of strange. You can take that O-ring off there, clean out from under here. You always want to make sure on these, any anytime there's been broken material in it, that you clean this out because if you look in here, there's pieces all down in here of that broken bumper. So that'll keep it from sealing and keep it from firing. So normally what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and take a air compressor and blow that out real good. still a bunch down through in the inside. But you just want to make sure there's nothing left in that, nothing left in that whatsoever when you're done with it. There should be nothing in any of those holes. There should be no black on it. Everything should be off of it. And after blowing out all that, I think I still have, I still got some more in there for sure. can't get it with that you can use a pick you can use pretty much anything in this case what's handy is a pin I'm just pushing it down through there got my hands all nice and cleaned off here now now that we've got the unit all cleaned up I was just going to show you the poker that I normally use also and that's just to poke down through those holes make sure that all of those are free as long as they're free don't have anything in them what you can do is you can go ahead and put the o-ring on and you'll match it up does it come with that o-ring though hmm. I'm not seeing it apparently the o-ring on the outside isn't part of the firing valve system but this o-ring is still good nothing wrong with it what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take it and all I'm gonna do is pull it through and twist my rag around to get everything off of it. So it feels nice and nice and good shape. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Again, look all down through here. Make sure every one of these holes is free of debris. You'll either lube your O-ring up here with your grease, or you'll do it with your oil either way, but you wanna do it all the way around when you're doing it. So I usually just grab some all the way around it. I like to use it very liberally. Snap that back down onto there. It's looking good in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw just a little bit of oil on here on the outside. Again, that just that's for ease of installation later. When we put it back down in there, along here, it has less force, so it just kind of goes straight down in and grabs. Again, down in here, that's something we're gonna wanna clean out next. But first, while my hands are all nice and clean, I'm gonna wanna do the top of the head valve assembly also. So same thing with these outside O-rings here. If you're doing it with the original ones, you'll match them up to the ones that came off. So there will be some originals here somewhere, but I know that these two clear ones go to the outside here. And yes, I, it, they do look like they're the wrong size. They're not the wrong size. That is how they're supposed to sit. So if you're, if you're pulling them to one side, they look off, but they're not. That's exactly how they're supposed to be. 
So next you've got the two here. Those are for the inside. One is just slightly smaller than the other. The one that's slightly smaller is the one that's at the, at the opposite end of the seal here. So a smaller one there, again, just grab some lube, pull it through. On these, if you start at one section here, and then you can just kind of push all the way around. So if you hold it there right in the corner, just push all the way around. And it'll snap right down in there. Now it's in there perfect. So up, and then just work it all the way around. Right down in there. So that's good. I'll go ahead and lube this up just a little bit more for the heck of it. Never a bad idea all down in here, all around here. From there we've got a new spring that comes with it. So that new spring goes just like this in the bottom here. So your whole assembly here goes right down in. I already cleaned the top piece up for the head valve here. And again, it's just an H5, but it goes straight down in there. Oh, it looks like I missed a piece there. Okay, got it. It goes right down in there, and then as you put this together, you just want to pay attention as you're going down in where your O-rings are. So, if you if you're having a hard time, if it's hard at all to push on, then your O-rings are probably pinched along the outside here. So the, the easiest way to do it is to take it, I'll show you here, without that in there, just so you can see a little bit better. Have a little bit more control of where they go. But on the side here, when they're poking out, you just push them back down in. So wherever it's poking out at, wherever it's gonna pinch at, you push that, push in on that piece. See how it's, I got it up there again. It's gonna, it's gonna pinch in there as I'm going down. Push it back down in. So again, let's see if I can get a little bit better angle on that. You can also use a pick if you like. So let's see here if I can show you. See if I can get it to pop out on this side. So right there, they're wanting to pop out. So what you gotta do is push on here. Push on the seal as you're going back down in there. So push on the seal and down in. Make sure they're not pinching. And you'll do that for two of them. There's two of them there. If you pinch that O-ring at all, it will ruin it. It will not be good anymore. But once that's down in there, you can put that top piece in. You've got a hold because you're on spring tension here. But then you can just let it go right down in with that H5. Get it partially down in there just so it's screwed a little bit. And then you're going to want to line it up. There it is. Let it come up to there, but don't let it come up far enough. Don't let it come up far enough that your, your O-rings come up out again. As soon as it's nice and free here, go ahead and tighten it down. If you do that prematurely or you do it when, when there's some sort of tension on here at all, you can pinch one of those O-rings and your, and your nail gun will not work right. It's kind of a very delicate process when it comes to that piece. Here we want to just clean the rest of this stuff out. Again, you can blow it out. Just kind of putting it on the ground there. You want everything out of there so it's nice and clean down on the inside. Right. So then it goes right back down in there. top piece 
And again, I oiled around here just to make it a little easier. You can do it. I'm sorry, I forgot the bumper here. Normally it stays down in there, but it just goes straight back up in there. It'll sit in there the whole time. It'll be good. You wanna make sure this is lubricated on the outside here. I've already done that, but another lube doesn't hurt. So if you put that all back down in there, the only thing we have left here is your piston. And it needs the new LB0901 and then the, well, the gasket on the back side doesn't come with it. There is a, an O-ring back in here. A lot of times it doesn't need replaced. Normally what I do if we're not replacing it is I'll take it out here. Just clean it off. Again, just pull around, pull all the way around as you're doing it with the rag so it's nice and clean I usually take the piece of cloth here and just roll through in my opinion it's the easiest way to do it on these you know again you can use cordless tool cleaners or QD electronic cleaner works well but in my opinion nice easy elbow grease here works just as well and then you don't have to use chemicals and things that cost money so clean it up well again you can wash all this stuff off if you want you can you can do it however you'd like as long as it dries out before you put it back together so just get as much of the stuff off as you can you don't want to use like a wire brush or anything abrasive on this because it's all important seal areas Normally, it's not anything that's going to be too hard to take off to begin with, though, so. We can take the trigger assembly out now. This fell when I was putting it upside down there. But the trigger assembly, usually it's all together like this, and you can just kind of pull it to the side and pull out at the same time. And the whole thing comes out. If it doesn't, you can take a pair of needle nose here. Take them out. Next, I'll show you how to put the O-rings on the trigger system, which are the last ones we have left before we finish up. So on the trigger here, you'll do you'll take it apart and it should come with all of the o-rings for the trigger assembly so you'll take your pick or whatever you're using be careful not to stab yourself pull off your o-rings one at a time match them up <clears throat> put a new one on grease at the same time all around it I usually like to grease the inside here just because when you're putting it back down in that's grease it'll be on the inside there for the entire life so again right down here and they're kind of hard but if you if you push with your thumb on one side and just kind of work it down in you can take them off of there Something with a little bit uh, thinner of a poker on this one will probably be a better idea. Just stab myself, but it wasn't too bad. Let's see here. I'm just going to twist it to go ahead and break it. I know which one goes back on it anyway. Thing's actually in pretty good shape. Wow. Surprising. Surprise me. So that'll be the black one here. It goes back on. And there'll be two clear ones. I'm not sure exactly where they're at down here, but here's one. So the smaller one goes at the back, and then there's a, they might be the same size. I'm not sure. 
we'll pull them off here. Again, just like the other ones. Let me go ahead and get a smaller poker here. Something with a smaller head on it. That'll help you out. Just to get down in there just a little bit better. That one was kind of a kind of a thick pointy head on it. You just pull that up and over. A lot easier with that one. Same thing with the bottom one. You can do them one at a time or you can do them both together. I'm pretty sure they're the same size. We'll look here shortly. This one may be a little bit bigger, the bottom one. Yep, it sure is. It sure is. Got one there. See the smaller one here. I'm not sure what happened to the bigger O ring. So I found them there over in the box still. Maybe look through the uh, papers here a little bit better. I didn't. Didn't even realize I was missing them. So, but anyway, next one. And you'll just stretch it right over the other ones, right over the top. Put some grease on it, straight down. Lube that all up real good. And go ahead and put it down in there. Spring on next. And you can put it back down in the housing here. more here for the back end. So we're gonna need a pair of needle nose for that. I'm gonna want to pull this out. Don't grab too hard. But pull that straight out. And you want to take the O-rings off of here. And just work your way down through until it goes and then pull it off off and up and over so. and then the smaller one just goes on the end there like such nope. and this one here first Keep them separate and you won't mix them up, but you want to make sure the right ones go back on. And just work it over on one corner, pull it around to the other. So now that that's all back together and lubed up, put it back down in. I think I put the old spring back in there. You can use the new one if you like. Honestly, I've never seen one of those springs break, so I don't think it's really too terribly important, but new gasket here. 
Then you put your piece there and your BFO 204 retainer, the top bumper I call it. So we've already got your, no, oh, we don't have the piston assembly down in here, I'm sorry. No, we already had it down in here. So it actually does, I thought that was a new O-ring, that's the one we cleaned. But then we're gonna use a new LB0901 on this. Got one here. And again, a good uh, good little bit of greasing back there, or a little bit of tool oil, one or the other, is always a good idea. They say it's it's an oil-free zone, but I think that's just to sell more nail guns, personally. So you'll want to again put that straight back down through. Once you grease. All the way around the inside. And then you can grease afterwards too. Everyone kind of has their different ways of doing it and different ways that they think greasing's right. But as long as you've got some sort of lubricant in it, it's gonna work a lot better. You know, I've seen a lot of people who run and actually use good tool oil all the time and keep them real nice and wet, and and they work great. But that our lubricant, our silicone grease has already been worn out at that point. So uh, I don't know which way directly is the best way to do it, but in my opinion, the high temperature silicone grease, I see it last a lot longer as far as if people abuse their guns. And it seems like almost everybody does. So we're gonna go ahead and throw the BFO 212 seal over the top there. Traps everything there. And it does come with with new screws here. It did come for an, with a new screw for the top also. I've never seen one back out, but they seem to think for some reason it needs a new one. Go ahead and put all those back in with our H5. First one. Uh, I forgot this is the sequential trigger, so I can't bump. No leaks or anything coming from it. It's firing every time. I'm going to run another 30 or 40 nails through it before I send it out. I usually run at least 50, so. But it's firing good. I'd say that thing's good to go. We've got the rebuild kit one left, and then we've also got one that they said was a parts gun. So I had an extra trigger laying around. I went ahead and threw a trigger on it. But it looks to me when I open the gun, it looks to me like somebody just replaced all this stuff. This stuff does not look look old at all. So 
it looks to me like it's missing a piece here. So the seal, the BFO 212 that doesn't come in the rebuild kit, it's missing that. I wonder if somebody tried to rebuild it themselves and missed that piece and thought it wasn't worth fixing. Throw that back over there. I'm gonna go ahead and lube this up real quick while we're at it. Again, it's always a good idea. Right, that's the only lube a lot of these things get. Most of them get beat just all to death by just about everybody that uses them. That or they've got water in the in the lines or rust in the lines. So I'm gonna put this back together here. Seems kind of seems a little bit weird the way it's going on, but I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down. I didn't check out any of the rest of it, but Got a little leak and it sounds like coming from the trigger. So I'm getting a little leak in here, it sounds like from the trigger on it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the customer and see what he has to say. Because nine times out of ten leaking from the trigger. Seems to shoot fine. So if we look right there, you see how flat that O-ring is? How much that O-ring's been? So somebody tried to rebuild this at some point or put some parts in it or they tried to do something to it, but they didn't replace the O-rings here. That or it wasn't lubed very well and it went bad over time, but it's leaking out the trigger there. So it needs a rebuild kit as far as a firing system kit, just like we did. But other than that, should tell you exactly how to fix whatever's going on with any kind of Frame Pro 701 XP. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.